Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're getting an update from West Red Lake Gold Mines and the VP of Exploration, Will Robinson. We're going to be talking about some recent drill results that came out at the beginning of this week, August 12th, from the main Austin zone and the McVeigh zone. We've recently been talking a lot about the north and south Austin zones, but now these recent high-grade results from the main Austin and McVeigh zone even more focused on building up these high priority areas to build this inventory of ounces to support that restart, which again is planned to commence in the second half of next year. West Red Lake Gold Mines is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol WRLG and on the OTCQB under the symbol WRLGF. Now, Will, let's just talk about the importance of these two zones and these high-grade results that you are getting here. Again, all working into the restart of this mine. Take us through, again, this Austin zone and the smaller resource at the McVeigh zone, but how critical these are to understanding where the mineralization is to restart this mine. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, so great results we had out yesterday from the two zones, Austin and McVeigh. You know, two and a half meters at 107 grams out of Austin. Uh, that was the highlight hole. And then in McVeigh, we had a pretty similar intercept at 2.35 meters at about 107 grams per ton as well. So Austin is is kind of the meat and the potatoes of the deposit, about 900,000 ounces in the indicated category at 6.9 grams per ton. As you said, McVeigh is a little bit smaller portion of the resource. Uh, it's currently carrying around 80,000 ounces at 6.4 grams. But uh, the nice thing about McVeigh is it's close to surface. And, you know, now that we're in there doing some of this additional definition drilling on McVeigh with an accurate geologic model, it's really starting to bear fruit. And we're seeing a lot of potential, you know, higher grades, good widths within this zone. And we have a really good understanding of the structural controls. And so that allows us to drill it off very effectively and then, um, you know, take that confidence and then integrate that into our uh, our short term planning model. Well, and Will, we were talking about this off mic that in a statement in the press release, Shane, the CEO of the company, made a point that you can see this zone capable of producing gold grades in excess of 250 grams per ton over meaningful widths. And so we were talking about what is a meaningful width and what's a mineable width. Maybe just speak to how you've really dialed in your understanding, not just of the Austin zone and the South Austin, North Austin, but even in McVeigh, finding wider widths that are now not just meaningful, but also mineable. Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, mineable, the term really depends on the mine, right? But at Madison, what we're kind of looking at as a general rule of thumb, you know, the other term to use would be smallest mineable unit, SMUs. And so if we have two meters, you know, an ore grade material, which we're considering, you know, that six to seven gram per ton range, we would consider that mineable any day. And so any time that, you know, we get over two meters, but then exceptional grades at, you know, over a hundred grams over the composite width, that's very exciting for us. And so, uh, but, you know, it wasn't just the highlight hole that we hit McVeigh, you know, another couple of the, uh, the standouts, 3.3 meters at, you know, almost half an ounce, 14.6 grams, four meters at just over 10 grams. I mean, those are all very encouraging. And and McVeigh, you know, it's probably one of the more structurally complex parts of the deposit. So the the transposition aspect has really taken place a lot uh, in the McVeigh zone. And so we get these isolated pods of ore within the overall structural or mineralized zone. But accurately characterizing those and drilling them effectively, you can still see where you can get some pretty impressive uh, grades and widths by drilling in that area. And so now that we do have a good understanding of of the McVeigh area and having it be so close to the uh, to the West portal and surface and and in and around existing infrastructure, these are you know, these are ounces that we can hopefully plug into the uh, the early phases of our our mine sequence. What is possible at this McVeigh zone then? Because it is the smaller resource here. And in all fairness, some of the past operators had some issues there, but you're making comments here that sound like this McVeigh zone uh, could be quite the growth area for you. Yeah, McVeigh kind of generated a nasty reputation for itself, you know, with the previous operator. And we're still seeing a lot of upside in there. And it's funny to think about, but, you know, McVeigh is probably the part of Madison that we know the most about, right? Because it has the most recent work done on it, has extensive development. You know, it was tried with an inaccurate geologic interpretation that then, you know, the team at the time was forced to reinterpret all of that and get it to a level where then it was actually working and, and then feeding ineffectively 
you know, to the mine plan. And so we still see a lot of upside there. And, and what this first pass of definition drilling showed us is that there's still a lot of upside within this zone. And so we were already putting plans in place to come in and drill from the three level. So this drilling was all completed from the first level in McVeigh. We've got a second batch of results, which is essentially the second half of drilling out of this station that we'll be coming out with another press release on. But we're excited to get back in and keep continuing to define this area at depth uh, down at, from the three level area in the west part of the mine. And that's about 100 meters depth. So the levels are separated by about 50 meters each. So so pretty good growth potential that we're starting to see in McVeigh. So it's coming together nicely. Well, and Will, just thinking of the uh, depth component, the last time we had John, you mentioned that you had dewatered things down, I think, all the way to the 12 level at the time. And, and you mentioned off mic, it may even be down to the 13 level. Maybe just speak to how this gives you more of a line of sight into the depth component of the deposit to get to areas that prior operators didn't dewater down that far. They weren't operating down that far. And it also brings in the components of underground drilling to keep your costs down, but access some areas that may have some low-hanging fruit at the depth component. Yeah, definitely. It's a great point. So the uh, the past two operators being Clode Resources and then Pure Gold, they were really constrained to the seventh level and up, you know, within the mine. So they were only able to get down around in and around the seven level. And I think Pure Gold got a little bit deeper than that into the top of South Austin, but right before shutdown. But the uh, the original operator who was mining in this area, you know, 40s, 50s and 60s, they, they were able to take the deposit all the way down to the 26th level, which is about 1300 meters depth. And, uh, but, you know, those were times when, you know, gold was, was at about $20 an ounce or somewhere in that area. And uh, they were really only taking the, like the super high grade portions of the deposit and leaving a lot behind. And so we're seeing a lot of potential once we get down past seven level, you know, within the deposit was within some of these areas that we're drilling off now in Austin, for instance, in South Austin from deeper levels and really having a lot of material left. Whereas, you know, Everything from seven level and up could be a little bit thin in places. Um, obviously, some of the results out of McVeigh that we've just put out are indicating there's quite a bit left behind potentially. And then the area in North Austin would be above this level, but that's a new area that we're defining. But again, to your point, we're seeing a lot of upside as we get deeper in the mine and hopefully be able to define you know larger, higher tonnage areas within the deposit. So look, well, let's face it, everyone is focused on the mine restart. So as we're talking about these different levels, what comes near term in the mine plan when you do restart this mine? For sure. It's going to be a mix. We're you know aggressively drilling off what we consider to be the highest potential and the most prospective areas. And so we're we're doing a little bit of a dance with the two underground drills. We're bringing them into North Austin to find new zones that are away from remnant mining because we would like to have you know a healthy amount of that buffer area to bring larger tonnage scopes into play, perhaps give ourselves a little bit of breathing room. But then we're also taking advantage, you know, of high priority areas within the Austin, South Austin zone. And now McVeigh is coming back into the picture as well as, as something that could move the needle early on. And so it's really going to be a mix um, from the different areas of the mine. And we're trying to, to set ourselves up and, and prioritize these areas effectively with the drilling so that we're drilling off the larger, more continuous, and obviously the higher grade portions first and getting those queued up and ready to go and hand it off to the engineers for mine design so that then, you know, we can basically optimize that part and then then move ourselves into some of these areas as we move down in the ranking system. So starting with high geo confidence first and then, and then working our way down from there. Well, and Will, while everybody is focused on the mine restart for next year, and that's where most of the definition drilling and the delineation of resources has been at McVeigh, North Austin, Austin, and South Austin, Maybe just speak to the upside. You have a lot of other targets that I don't think anybody's paying attention to. And sometimes when we ask Shane, he just says, well, just ask Will about that. <laughs> but you've got the eight zone at depth. You've got the Confederation package of rocks at surface that's different from the Balmer assemblage. So kind of the Great Bear model. And you also have some new eight zone lookalikes that are a little more shallow. So maybe just speak to all of the exploration upside that you still have that I think gets totally overlooked by the market right now. Yeah, definitely. We we do have a lot of exciting targets across the property. You know, you know, Pure Gold actually did a really good job with the exploration, the surface exploration, did a lot of good work on the ground across the property, defined a lot of good targets. Um, we're trying to sort of take a different approach this year. We have a surface drill that just showed up last week. It's already um, queued up on surface drilling an area that we're calling Upper Eight. And so this zone is is just as it sounds. It's a it's an eight zone lookalike hosted within the same ultramafic unit. 
called the uh, Russet Lake Ultra Mafic. And we have, uh, you know, a few historic drill holes that were poked into this area. Um, it's quite a bit shallower uh, than eight zone. The area we're targeting now would only be about 300 to 350 meters depth. But there's enough geologic evidence there to, you know, encourage us to go in and, and do some follow up drilling to see if we can't tap into another eight zone. And so our, our regional focus is really kind of forcing the question, where could we find another eight zone and how can we generate some new concepts and new ideas district wide across our property to go out and actually make a new discovery. And so, you know, upper eight is one that we're really excited about. There's another one about two kilometers southwest of Madsen near the uh, the wedge deposit. This this zone is actually part of the wedge resource. It's called MJ. And it's, uh you know, the wedge deposit straddles the contact, if you will, between the Russet Lake Ultra Mafic unit and uh, the Balmer assemblage, you know, Mafic basalt rocks. And uh, the MJ portion, though, is an eight zone lookalike in the ultra mafic high grades and uh, what we're planning to do this year is uh, extend that along strike to the northeast and um you know and so we'll have a few meters allocated to that target as well but then uh, another area that we're looking at and that we're pretty excited about what we noticed when we did sort of a structural evaluation at the deposit scale is you have these splays coming off of the main madison trend and fork you know would be an example which is part of the existing resource McVeigh is another splay, if you will, off the main Madsen trend, and then North Austin even. And these things have about a one kilometer spacing, periodicity, you know, along the main structural trend. And so what we did is we extrapolated that out to the Northeast, looked at some surface uh, geophysics. Uh, we have a really good air mag data set from 2014. And, uh, you know, we put together a couple of conceptual targets a little bit further out that direction, testing for, you know, Madsen style mineralization, but a long trend to the Northeast along the main structural corridor uh, in areas that have very sparse drilling. And so those would be some new concepts that we'll be testing this year as well. And we're currently preparing a, a press release that kind of summarizes these ideas so that, uh, you know, investors in the market can can see what we're up to. So just give us an insight then how much more drilling is to come this year and approximately what that allocation is going to be besides definition drilling and some of that more exploration focused. For sure. Yeah. So So basically our strategy has shifted a little bit. We're planning to allocate, you know, flow through monies to uh, the Rowan deposit this year. But then we sort of reevaluated and thinking about timing, you know, and like what Rowan is meant to be, you know, and at the size and scale that it is currently with the MRE that we put out in April, call it 200,000 ounces at close to 13 grams in the indicated category. That's already at, at a size and grade that will provide a nice supplemental feed source, you know, to the Madison Mill potentially down the road. And so to go back and and to grow resource at this time at Rowan, uh, maybe a little bit preemptive, considering we probably still have, you know, a one to two year permitting timeline and then development. So call it, you know, three years before we can really start thinking about putting that thing into production and bringing material to Madsen. But, you know, if we were to target things closer to the Madsen mill, we feel like, you know, a new discovery closer to home would move the needle, you know, a lot more effectively for us. And so we've reallocated those meters to the Madison Regional Program. And so we've got up to 10,000 meters planned, um, about 3 million bucks, you know, flow through expenditures to spend on that drilling. And that's kind of the way we've scoped it out for the remainder of the year. And then of course, you know, the two underground drills will continue turning. We've got close to 30,000 meters planned uh, to wrap up till the end of year, heavily focused on definition. And then, uh, you know, a little bit of expansion drilling also uh, sprinkled in there. Okay, Will Robinson, Vice President of Exploration at West Red Lake Gold Mines. We will post a link to the news release in the show notes. Please, everyone, have a read over that. Send us any questions you have for Will and the team at West Red Lake on the drilling, the mine restart, anything else you want to know about the company, and we will get those answered for you. Will, thank you very much for the time today. Thanks, guys. Always a pleasure.